All right, USU class, welcome back. So we're doing videos on all our organic compounds, and today we're going to knock out proteins. Remember, if you guys struggled on lipids, go back and watch the lipids one, okay? I didn't get to show you these. Oh, does that not scream lipids to you? Then I don't know what does. The funny thing is, I don't even know if I'd like that. I don't even know if that would be good, but it looks good right now because I'm a hungry boy. So anyway, let's go ahead and knock out proteins now. So now we're doing proteins. So here you go. Good luck. So when we look at proteins, okay, there's going to be word on here we need to know. Proteins are made up of amino acids. So what I like to think of this is, if I have a blender, and I throw in a gigantic protein, like a steak, and I throw it in here, and I pull out the smallest block on the planet, we call that an amino acid okay that's what it's going to be it's going to be an amino acid so if we remember let's kind of do our chart carbohydrates the smallest piece was called glucose okay for fats let's switch colors for fats or lipids the smallest piece was a triglyceride so now we're doing proteins for proteins the smallest piece is an aa i'm going to write aa a lot today and an a stands for amino acids so then here's my obvious question the question is, how many proteins are in the world? And the answer is billions upon billions. So the question is, how many amino acids are there in the world? And your thought would be like, oh, there's billions upon billions upon billions. There's not. In fact, there's only 20 amino acids. Does that surprise you? There's very few of them. So let's go ahead and take a picture or look at what an amino acid looks like. Not that, not that, not that, not there it is. This is what I want you to know for amino acid. Remember, you have to know their shapes and you have to know their names. So this is an amino acid. So let's go ahead and do it. Now, if you were in class, I'd be a jerk face. I'd say, everyone take out your periodic table and find the letter R. And then after you looked and looked and looked, someone would raise their hand and be like, Bert, there is no letter R on the periodic table. You're right, because <laughs> it doesn't belong there. R represents what we call the side group or the side chain. Remember what I told you. I told you there are 20 of these. Now the nice thing is R group is the only thing that changes. Everything else stays the same. So let me go ahead and teach you some, some chemistry. See if this helps you guys out at all. Okay. In chemistry, you're going to learn about this guy. Okay. He's super smelly. We use him as a cleaning product. His name is ammonia. Okay, if you have Davidson, he's going to teach you about a polyatomic ion oh, called NH4+. Plus. His name is ammonium. Ammonium. You don't need to write these down. Just kind of stick with me for a second. Now look at this guy. This guy is a nitrogen and two hydrogens. So this guy's an NH2. Whenever we have an NH2, we call that a amino group. You guys see what I'm doing yet? This is called an amino group. So let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. Let's get rid of this guy. So I got an amino. Now let's jump to this other side, which I'm going to do in blue. Okay. When this guy forms a bond or he kind of comes, he kind of kick out this guy. And he kicks him out as H+. Plus. Now based on chapter 2, H+, plus should scream at you something. Should scream at you something. This is an acid. So now can we do Sesame Street? Amino acid. This is why they call these guys an amino acid. There's one amino on one side. There's one acid on the other side. So if you guys are going to get really good at recognizing the shape, can I give you two red flags? Number one, if you see this R, that probably means it's an amino acid because that represents a side chain for the amino acid. The second flag you have is this guy, which is nitrogen. This is the first organic compound we've talked about that's really brought nitrogen to the party. You remember sugars, right? Sugars were C6H12O6, okay? Just carbon and water, no nitrogen. Fats are mixtures of C and H, no nitrogen. So I'm just telling you, if you see nitrogen, it should scream at you, Amino acid, which eventually I'm going to put a bunch of amino acids together so it's to scream at you, protein, okay? That's what we're looking for. You're looking for protein. That's what you want. So now can I go to the next slide? All of a sudden, I made it infinitely harder. 
The reason why I made it infinitely harder is because, look, here's your red flag. Nitrogen! Nitrogen! Okay? The only thing I changed was the blue box. And the blue box is your R group. Do you see how hard that is? Can I go back really quick? Can you see how the top's always the same? It's just whatever's coming off that middle carbon. So if this R group, we call that tyrosine. What if I go down to this guy and I change the R group to something else? Well, congratulations. That's one of the 20 amino acids, and his name's glutamine. So you ready for the bomb? Boom! Those are all 20 amino acids. Ha! <sighs> Lucky for you guys, you do not need to memorize any of these R groups. You just need to know there are 20 of them. Okay, now when we come over here, this is my biggest pet peeve when teaching and kids really struggle on this one. So don't fall for this trap. You ready? When we look at our amino acids, there are 20, but then it divides into half. Nine of them are this, switching to green, and 11 of them are this. So there's nine that are essential. So let's keep to, keep to our color theme. Nine are essential, and then 11 are what we call non-essential. Now, I love it when people say this. People say... Well, non-essential means you don't need them. No, 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 no. All 20 are important. All 20 are important. It's just nine are essential. Essential says, in red, red down here at the bottom says, the organism cannot make it, a.k.a. we have to eat them. So tell me about the 11 non-essentials. They are so important, but we can make them okay you guys gotta be smart with your diet sometimes i have people come in and talk to me and they go extreme like i'm only eating tofu and nothing else on the planet well you gotta be careful because in your diet you gotta make sure you get these nine essentials if you don't your body's gonna really begin to struggle okay we talked about carbohydrates they're our quickest form of energy we talked about fats they're our most energy Proteins are the structure of our body. They're everything we are. They're our hair. They're our kidneys. They're our liver. They're our skin. They're our blood vessels. Everything we are is protein. We are protein, 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 protein. So guess what happens if you don't eat one of these nine essentials? Man, you're really going to struggle. Okay, so make sure you guys know your numbers. So now here's my next question. What happens if I take this amino acid and this amino acid and I add them together? Okay, do we call that a disaccharide? No, because that's two sugars. Do I call it a diglyceride? No, because that's a fat-based word. So you need to know the name of putting these two of these guys together. And that's where this guy comes in. This is an amino acid over here. I know that because I see nitrogen and I see R. This is another amino acid. I see nitrogen and I see R. So can I draw it like this? Is it an amino acid? This is an amino acid, and I want to put them together. Now you get the first protein word I'm going to give you, and the first protein word I'm going to give you is PEP. Whenever you hear PEP, that's going to be a protein-specific word. Okay, pepsin, pepsi, peptobismol. Okay, anytime you hear PEP, it's based on a protein of some sort. So if you hear PEP, it's very specific. So when we take an amino acid, we put a special bond between them. This special bond right here between these amino acids, see the bond I'm drawing right now? We call that a peptide bond. So that does not mean that we call this a peptide. We call this a dipeptide. So don't panic about this. Di meaning two, pep meaning proteins. If I have two amino acids together, we call it a dipeptide. Now remember, I'm making a bond here. So the question you're going to have in your U.S. exam is this dehydration or hydrolysis? Well, I'm taking water out, so this would be dehydration, okay? So what happens if I put three amino acids together? What if I was sneaky, 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 and I added a third one in here, and I added all three of these together? Well, then we couldn't call it a dipeptide, so then we call it a, you could say tripeptide. I like tripeptide, but we call that then a polypeptide. So can I write that word for you really quick? Poly means many, and peptide means a protein okay now these are the polypeptide and all these let's switch back to blue because i've been trying to keep my theme r group r group r group r group r group okay these are all poly this is polypeptide most of you never say polypeptide most of you just say protein 
So if this is a protein, if this is a polypeptide, what would I call one of these circles? Just one of those circles. That guy would be an AA, meaning a what? Amino acid. What if I did this on the test? What if I said two of these guys together? Well, that's not an amino acid anymore because I have two of them together. So the black box would be a dipeptide. What if I have a lot of them together? What if I have like whoop, four of them together? Well, then that would be a polypeptide. You guys getting good at this yet? Okay. So there's protein. So now there's one more thing about protein I got to teach you, which is going to pay huge in the future chapters. Right now, I just want to introduce him. I want to introduce him to this. Okay, so let's go to this guy. Do, 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 do. Where am I? Why? I don't even have him on here. Oh, there they are. It's kind of hidden in there. There's something we're going to need to talk about a lot in this class, and it's the almighty word enzymes. If you guys are uh, in chemistry, they call them catalysts. Okay, enzymes make reactions happen faster okay they speed up chemical reactions they're all about speed so they're fast they make reactions happen fast okay enzymes are proteins now this is one of the hardest parts of this class especially if you're not big into names this freaks people out so can i draw some enzymes for you really quick without you guys freaking out this is an enzyme his name is sucrase can i draw another enzyme for you his name is lactase. Now, at first thought, you're going to want to be like, hey, those are sugars. Au contraire, mon frere, they are not sugars. If you guys remember, sugars end in os. Os. Okay, O-S-E. Os. Enzymes end in ace. <laughs> ace. So whenever you guys see this uh, suffix, A-S-E, you got to think that's an enzyme, and you got to know enzymes are proteins. So guess what sucrase does? You said, we said it makes chemical reactions happen faster. Sucrase breaks sucrose. What does lactase do? Lactase breaks lactose. So guess what happens if you're born and you struggle making lactase? Well, then you're going to drink this guy or eat this guy. Hold on. There's one ring tied with another ring. Okay, it's a disaccharide. Disaccharide. Remember, what's saccharide? Saccharide is sugar. One of the number one disaccharides I gave you was lactose. So there's only one guy who can break that bond right there. Okay, and that's lactase. But you don't have him. So then guess what you are diagnosed with? If you cannot destroy lactose because you do not have lactase, you are now lactose intolerant and that's how it works and guys enzymes are a huge deal in, in chemistry and biology every living system man we're going to talk a lot about enzymes so i just want to introduce them for you guys now so let's go ahead and do our chart here Are you guys ready okay shape okay for shape this one's going to be a little bit harder you need a carbon and a hydrogen because it is definitely organic i would put the r group here right because you need that r group i put acid over here so don't worry about him and then i'd put nitrogen over here Okay, that's the general shape of an amino acid. Okay, names. Pep and ace. You need those two names inside and out a thousand times over. Make sure you're super comfortable with anything pep and anything ace. Function. Function. Only one. Structure. My entire body is made out of proteins. I promise you, almost anything you're touching is a protein. Okay, examples. Okay, the examples are going to be questions like this. We're going to talk about 20 amino acids. We're going to talk about how nine of them you have to eat called essentials. We're going to talk about 11 are non-essential. Oh, that's an H and it's not an 11. My bad. Okay. 11 are non-essential, which means you just got to get them through, you know, your body can make them as long as you eat them. We talk about how they're important and what they do. We talk about dipeptides, polypeptides. I think an example is an enzyme. I think this is where we write enzymes and put them on here. Okay. And that... Ladies and gentlemen, is your video on proteins. So once again, I hope I'm not overwhelming you. If you were here in school, man, I would take two days to do this. But I'm kind of streamlining it online for you. Guys, take your time. Study these. Watch these again and again. Get super comfortable with them. Okay, that's proteins. we got one more video. Nucleic acids. Boom, boom. Coming up.